Now I'm going to go back to trying to explain the basics again, but this time where we're going to just have, uh, in fact, we're not going to have any blocks in there. We're just going to have a section and a container. I'm going to make this container be, uh, we'll just go with 800 in width. Okay, we'll leave it as yellow. And what I'm now going to do is add in some extra items into here, okay? Because when you have more items in, then the layouts will become much more important. So let's just go over here. We clicked on the container and we're going to go and edit. We're sorry, heading, not edit. Basic text and we'll drop in a button as well like that. OK, and you know what? Let's just drop in a image as well. Now, I'm just going to click on the image and I'm going to add one in. By the way, we're not here to go through the, um, the elements or the widgets. It's just about understanding how do things work. Let's just drop this wonderful image of me in. And we'll just make this be about 200 like that, something like that. And we got a button. I'm not going to change the styling. I just want you to get it to understand. So in container one at the moment, okay, let's just go back over to the content. Everything is set as a row. If, however, I had done this, everything is set as a column. So I'm really sorry if you were watching the earlier stuff and going, well, there's not much happening in with the functions, isn't it? You can move it up and down the screen, but that's about it. It's more about when you get into now the individual elements. So that is the column approach. Look at how it looks at the moment. It is at the top. In fact, let me just make this container be a little bit bigger, right? Let's make the height of it be, uh, let's go with ATVH. And I've also changed the background color in case it's hurting your eyes, okay? So container one in the content tab, it is at the top. If I do this, okay, container one now moves downwards into the section. If I do that, it moves all the way down. This is just the container at the moment, okay? That's all we're touching. That's rows, that is column. If I start to touch any of these items here, it now moves all the items. So you can see what it's doing now, okay? As I'm just going through these items over here. If I do this, it goes to the left. If I do this, it goes to the right. If I stretch it, you are now stretching it, okay? Just leave this as a left aligned, okay? Now, if we go down here to the row gap, if I was to add in 50, we are getting a 50 pixel row gap. Let's just get rid of that for a moment, okay? In fact, let's get rid of this, uh, what the value we had there for the column gap. Let me now put this back into row. Let me now go to column gap and add in 50. We have a 50 gap. If I now touch these items, this again is just touching your container within the section. It's not touching the contents. Let's leave it at the top. If I touch the items here, you're not going to get much movement here because everything is right up against the borders of the container thereabouts. So this is not going to do much for you at the moment. The key bit though is that everything is at the start. So if I adjust it, and I am going to adjust it with a bit of wrapping, Calm down, everyone. We are going to be looking at wrapping. If we go to the align cross axes, I think you can guess what this is going to do. You hit center, right? You do that. You stretch it. I mean, look, literally stretch does stretch it. Like, I look really tall. No, I don't. Um, so I'm just going to leave this at the top for now. So can you see how a lot of these um, settings, they have much more power and sway with what you can do than the previous video where when it's just section containers, you can rearrange things, but the content is the real power when you start to work with flex containers and stuff like that. Now then, I at the moment have got my items like that. I want them to be side by side. However, let me explain what I'm trying to get to. I want my header to be one line, right? I want it to go all the way across. Underneath, I wanna have the text, I want the button to be next door to the text, and then I want my image to be below that. So how are we gonna do that? Because this isn't gonna work for me because I want the button to be next door. Okay, now the button is next door, but now my text is squashed and my image is there as well. How do I make this work? This is where you wrap items. So when you're in the row, you can wrap. If you're in the column and you go here and you hit wrap, nothing's gonna happen, okay? It ain't gonna do jack. If you go to the row and you now activate the wrap, this happens. Now, already it's automatically kind of done what I was intending it to do. But let's pretend it, have to, it didn't. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over here and make this text be longer, like something like that. 
There we go, something like that, okay? So now we've got the button next door to the image. It's gone a little bit doolally. It's wrapped it, okay? It's now moving everything over. Because what it now starts to do is it starts to assign whips to our items. I've already said this is a custom width of 300. This button is probably a small width. This is now gonna be like, well, nearly all the way across, whereas this is only a little bit here. I'm probably gonna explain that very well. What we're gonna do is apply custom whips to get them to sit where I want them to be. But while it's on wrap, okay, what happens now if I start to mess around here? Well, again, that is only touching the container within the section. The items over here, again, just move things around as to where they're gonna sit, okay? And over here with the cross axes, it just moves it, and look, we know what the stretch does, okay? So you can play around to get the look you want. Now what I am gonna do though is to just squash everything up a little bit is in my container, I'm just gonna get rid of the ATVH and I'm gonna go to my padding and I'm just gonna say, give me about uh, 50 VH, okay? Bear that in mind though when you're putting in your units. I just wanna bring everything up to the top. But what I do want is my button to be next door to my text. Let's just go to container one, okay? Go to our content and I'm gonna say, give me a row gap of about 20. So let's just move things down a little bit there. We're gonna to go to our heading. We're gonna to go to the style and we're gonna to go to the width. Now, if I put in 10, it's a bit ridiculous. If I put in a hundred, that is pixel. But if I do a hundred percent, can you see the blue border there? That is a hundred percent of that container. That's okay. I mean, I could leave it as it is, it's fine. But I might need to come back and adjust that in a moment. And here's why. If I go to my basic text and I go to my width, I'm gonna say I want that to be 70% width. Can you now see what's happened? Even though this is a row and we are wrapping, the heading was probably, I don't know, 20%, 25%. That text, which is now 70%, well, 70 plus 25 is less than 100%. So I'm gonna go over to my heading and I could now, if I want, just go with like 35% because I know that will be more than 35 plus 70 is more than 100. Even I know that. And then we now have our button. Now our button is, it's kind of positioned in the right place. But if I click on it and I go to style, down here, we have the functionality for the alignment of the main axes, which is actually this one here, sorry. Sorry, align self. If I click here, that is now in the middle. Now you might say that's not in the middle. Actually it is, it's because we've got this line down here. So look at it now. The button is in the middle, or I can move it to the bottom, or I could even stretch it like that. So I'm able now to start to control where does that button sit. In fact, I'm just gonna do it. Ah, no, we'll leave it at the top like that. Now, if you feel like the button is too close, Remember, I could go to container one, I could go to the content and we have not applied a column gap. So if I now go in and I put in uh, 30, can you see what it's done? It might, in fact, if I go with like two, if I go with something too big, it's gonna drop over. But there you go, 30, let me just undo that. That's the only item that's moving, it's moved it along. Normally in the past, what you would have done is you would have gone to your button, gone to your style, gone to your layout and messed around with your margins. Oh, we'll do 30 here, 20 there and whatever and moved it around. That is now moved over. And this image, okay, if this image was smaller, let me make it be five. There it is, it's just over there. In fact, let's make it smaller, that was a bit ridiculous. There we go, let's go with 30. Can you see the image now? It is there. Because it fits within the 100% estate. Right, let's make it 300 pixels and it's back over there. I have, added in four items. I then need to add in a block. I've kept it all in container and it's all within a section. And I've used a, if we go back to the container, I have wrapped it, right? I've used rows and I've aligned it to be where I want. That being said, okay, if I make this section be a white color now, let's just go to the background. Let's make that be white. And I now pick all of these items up, okay, and I stick them into the section, and I completely get rid of that container now, okay? And I go to my section. Again, I'm gonna go to the layout. I'm gonna get rid of that 103 value there. I could, if I want, do all of this within a section. Now, believe me, there are some people that go, yeah, just go for it. There are some people that say, no, don't do that. 
I kind of flex between doing it and not doing it. Often it just depends on how complicated am I going to make that? Am I going to add in a container later? Am I going to add a block within a container? But what if I want the image to be on the right hand side? If I go to the image, okay, and I go down to style, you're not going to be able to do it, by the way, I'm telling you now. It, none of this is going to work for me. But what if I do something a little bit different? I'm now going to go and grab a block, okay? I'm going to just drag the block over and I'm going to move it there underneath the button. I'm now going to take my image and pop that into the block. Well, the image is still on the left-hand side. I don't even have to go in and touch the block, to be honest. I don't need to mess around with any of these. I could do if I want, but it's not going to make any difference. Look, I've hit end. The image is still on the left. So you sat there thinking, oh my God, this is pointless. No, it's not. Stay with me on this. I'm now going to go back over to my image, go to my style, scroll down. And now, because it's in a block, I have, look, a line self. Now it starts, center, end. I can even stretch it, which ain't going to do much. I can put it at the end. So I can now start to completely customize the layout of my contents. Look, I mean, I could just duplicate this if I want, right? At the moment, they're now sat below one another. Well, okay, let's go back to the block, right? Remember, we, at the moment, it's automatically column. Oh, there we go. We've now set it to be a row. And now I can go like this and stick it to the end. So you will find there is a little bit of trial and error sometimes, but if you get your items in, you can start to mess around with how it's going to look. I hope that's helped you understand a little bit more about some of the settings. Go and play with it. I'm Imran Web Squad, and I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, live the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bag.